Ann Simonson. I'm the author of Aging Powerfully, and I always bring that up because, quite frankly, this is my identity. Six months before turning 70, I wrote this book because I was looking at 70 as the beginning of the end, and it suddenly dawned on me that is not at all what has to happen. I could have, well, with the Blue Zones telling me this and the lifestyle medical practice that I'm a coach at telling me this, that we could have decades of great life past 70 or even 80 and maybe even 90. I'd like to say I've got one, two or three decades ahead of me. So I wrote the book, but although it's partially memoir, most of it is an explanation of that word powerfully. That's an acronym. Each letter represents a pillar of lifestyle that if we adopt uh, wholeheartedly will give us decades of life ahead. I'm not here to talk about that, though. I'm talk here to talk about my guest, and I am so happy to have met. This is our first meeting. Chef Val. It's Valerie Wilson, Macro Val, and Chef Val. She has quite a story. Do you mind if I read them your bio? Go ahead. Just say it. I'm going to read it because I think sometimes when we read somebody something, we get more into the, the depth of it than if they're expected to tell about themselves sometimes they gloss not gloss over they just yeah. kind of tuck some details away because it sounds like too much to say so chef valerie wilson also known as chef val has been in the food uh, industry since 1985 she's lived as a vegan whole food macrobiotic or she has lived a vegan whole food macrobiotic lifestyle since 1994. She started teaching cooking classes in 1997 and still teaches virtual and in-person in southeastern Michigan. Valerie offers lifestyle counseling, personal chef services, and hosts her own radio show, Real Food with Chef Val. She writes her local health magazines, but she, Nan, if you're going to read it, do it. Okay, back up. She writes for local health magazines and has a sub stack blog. You'll have to tell us what that is. Um, uh, I am the, oh, a, a blog. I am the creator of my health. She is the author of six cookbooks. Her most recent, Simply Healthy Scrumptious Desserts. And tell us about all of that. Explain all of that. You're quite an accomplished woman, aren't you? Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Nan. Yes. And it's wonderful when someone else does read it because we tend to downplay it, you know, but then hearing it. Yes, I have been teaching healthy whole foods cooking classes for 27 years. I was calling them whole foods cooking classes before the whole foods movement happened because people weren't understanding what I was doing. And uh, my background is in macrobiotic cooking which incorporates eating food from mother nature that are whole and not tampered with. So it is whole foods. And I decided to go vegan uh, that long ago also. And the, you know, the difference between the macrobiotic lifestyle is that uh, I incorporate the energy of the food and certain foods feed and nurture certain organs in the body. It's like studying oriental medicine and so it's just a little bit more in depth. And uh, I don't eat nightshade vegetables. And that's pretty common with macrobiotic people. I know that other people eat them on a regular basis. And that's fine. It's just, there's just slight differences there. But other than that, it's whole food. It's vegan, you know. Let me get into some of the details here. So um, macro, well, let me back up. Macrobiotics, is that concerned with, SOS, which is such a popular, uh, I'll say constraint now, restraint because of what has been shown to be problematic in the use of salt, oil, processed oils, as well as sugar. So did macrobiotics, based on what you taught so many years ago, you must have had a heck of a time finding places to get food, to shop, to have people understand what you were talking about. So that's a statement. The question is, does SOS free or constrained uh, fall in that anywhere? Well, uh, the difference is I have cooked with people who are SOS 
many, many times they have health conditions. So I'm very accustomed to doing it. I never, ever refined sugar went out the door, you know, that long ago. So white refined sugar, absolutely not. Uh, nothing that's refined or processed. So no refined salt whatsoever. I do use miso tamari and I do use sea salt. Okay. Um, when it comes to oil, I use organic olive oil. Okay. But I know that in our bundle, there's no oil. And I do understand that. And that's, you know, definitely what uh, my, all my recipes are. And like I said, because I've been cooking for so long, I can do oil-free cooking. I can do salt-free cooking. I cooked for this beautiful lady who lived in Canada. I went to her house and stayed with her for four days. And it was no salt whatsoever, no oil. She had high blood pressure and high cholesterol. And she had a lot of other restrictions. So I was using grated lemon rind and some beautiful fresh lemon juice. And so I was using all these different flavors and everything, you know, so the food was very palatable. Um, and so, you know, but in the, in the, the whole foods, you know, movement, um, it's low fat for sure. Absolutely no sugar and low salt. There's nowhere near as much salt in what I cook as the average American diet, you know, but I do love the misos and the tamaris and like chef Julia, her Japanese two cookbook that's in the bundle. Uh, I got really excited about that. And I remember her last year too, because she uses the misos, which I adore and the sea vegetables and things like that. Yeah, me too, actually. I have a salad dressing that I put on my enormous salad that I just had a little while ago that has miso. It has low sodium tamari because I'm gluten free, has some mustard, has some um, uh, uh, silken tofu. And yeah, I do all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us more about what brought you to that point. 27 years ago to go macrobiotic, was there a reason that you were um, focused on health to that degree? Because some people would say that was um, something that wouldn't have been out there in the mainstream in any way. So knock on wood, I didn't have any major health issues and I was in my early twenties, but it was almost like this was my life journey. I really feel like this was my life's journey because when I was a little girl, I had a crush on a TV star and his name was Dirk Benedict. He was face in the A-team and he was Starbuck in Battlestar Galactica. And when I was a little girl, I had a crush on him. And I learned that he had prostate cancer and that he wrote a book about prostate cancer. I learned this. And so as I got older, even as I got as like a teenager in my early 20s, I would go into bookstores and I'd ask people for this book and they didn't know what I was talking about. Meanwhile, I had developed eczema. I also had allergies pretty bad. And I was already starting to have a little bit of joint pains in my knees if I sat for a really long time. I have a family history of arthritis. And so I also started to realize that refined processed food was terrible for me. Through my journey of having eczema, I knew that if I ate sugar, uh, my eczema would flare up and I would scratch and it was terrible. So I already kind of knew, hey, there's something going on. I went into a health food store. I was visiting a friend there and there on the bookshelf was Dirk Benedict's book. It's ah. called, it's called Confessions of a Kamikaze Cowboy. And I, I, I tell this story in great detail on my YouTube channel. And I go into great detail because it's almost like the sun from, you know, the sun from God shined down on this book and angels <laughs> sang like, you know, there's my book. There's my book. The book changed my life because I could not put it down. He started talking about, how we're supposed to eat whole foods. They're not supposed to be refined and processed. We're supposed to eat the way our ancient ancestors did. But he also talked about the energy of the food. I was so drawn to the energy of the food, even though I was in my early 20s, I hadn't quite realized it yet. But now, obviously, I feel energy. I totally feel energy. I understand energy. Um, if I'm in somebody's energy field, I can pick up that's part of my counseling, really. I can pick up what's going on in their body. I'm intuitive and everything. So this study of the energy of the food, I was just so drawn to that. And so I just started changing my diet because it completely made sense to me. So needless to say, my allergies cleared up. I don't have any allergies. My, I have no joint pains whatsoever to this day. 
and my eczema is all gone. There's yeah. somebody online, Kira, who says, uh, who said, oh, M.G., I had a crush on Dirk, too. Didn't know anything about his cancer, but I remember that title. <laughs> yeah. You're bringing back memories. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So right. then I, I went and I worked at a macrobiotic cooking school. I apprenticed there for two years. But I literally had been in the food industry since I was 17 years old. My first job was at a deli. And after working there for a year, I was managing the deli. And then after that job, I was the manager of a French bakery and restaurant. And I learned how to make homemade bread and croissants. And oh, my God, they were so delicious. Not healthy, but, you know, I did learn how to make breads and croissants and everything. So I have a huge background with food. And then I turned macro and there was, you know, even though I had a huge background in food, there was an adjustment like shiitake mushrooms. Like, how do you cook those? Like sea vegetables, where, where did these come from? So there was a period of adjustment where you have to learn the new textures and the new tastes and you have to learn how to combine them and make them very flavorful. Oh, that's the other thing that I, I was leading to as it relates to macrobiotic. Some people, a lot of people are going to think, oh, come on, Nan, I know that. But some people may not know what you mean by nightshades. Tell them what nightshades are, some of the most common yeah. things. Something that goes on the most often eaten vegetable in America. What is yes. it? French fries. What do you think it is? Tomatoes. Yeah. So when I about that. When I teach cooking classes and I tell people this, there are always groans in the audience of the students because some people eat these foods every single day. Nightshade vegetables are a category of vegetables that literally they're called nightshades because they actually grow and bloom at night. They contain certain toxins inside of them that can lead to calcification of the bone which can lead to arthritis and joint pains. So if you have arthritis and joint pains, you might do better to get off of the nightshade vegetables and fibromyalgia. If you have fibromyalgia, these nightshade vegetables will make the pain worse. Now there are scientific studies about this all over the place. However, you know, the stupid Google drive and the computer, they've got contradictory information. So when I learned this information over 27 years ago, I stopped eating all nightshade vegetables. I don't cook with them. I may eat them occasionally, but you won't find them in my recipes. So what um, we're talking about, the, everyone, are the solanacea vegetables, yes. which include, go ahead. Tomatoes. tomatoes. And? White potatoes. Peppers. All peppers. Green, red, everything. Spinach. I know a lot of people out of the spinach. I, I don't. I eat kale and collards and bok choy and parsley. I do get lots of greens, but I don't do the I don't do the spinach. Okay. Um, also avocados and coconut. Um, now I do make coconut candies, and I know coconut is high in fat. I'm not really a fan of coconut. I don't use coconut anything else except for I make these coconut pecan truffles. And my regular customers, I cook for people. And they're vegan and they're sugar free. They love them. So I do use coconut occasionally, but right. I'm not really a fan of it. Um, I think I hit all of them. Okay. I don't think I missed any of them. But yeah, people are like, oh, eggplant. Eggplants. Oh, eggplant. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know people love these foods and I do understand that. But I also do counseling and I can't tell you how many people that have come and they have joint pains. And when I tell them this, some of them do it. Some of them don't. This one lady, she had fibromyalgia so bad. She was in pain all the time. And she finally, she had like come to my cooking classes. She heard me say this so many times. And she said, I'll be honest with you, Val. I didn't believe you, but I was in so much pain. I thought I'm going to try it. She goes, I didn't even stop eating them. I just dramatically cut back because she was eating tomatoes and spinach every day. She said she dramatically cut back and she said, I could not believe the difference. Like my pain went down 60%. Okay. And then she said that her mom had arthritis really bad. Her mom was even in the hospital for arthritis. And when her mom saw what happened to her, her mom did the same thing. And her mom's like, I can't believe my pain has been reduced by like 50%. Yeah. So people can experiment with that when they're having, I don't, fortunately, knock on wood, 
I don't seem to be affected by nightshades. I eat them all the time. I eat a lot of them, not a problem. But I have heard this, and some people say it also affects people uh, or people with autoimmune diseases yes. have to be especially cognizant to watch for the difference in symptoms when you eat or don't eat nightshades. So I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of a lack of information can affect someone their entire life. They can think they're doing everything else right. They can try one thing after another, lots of physicians, and it could be what's in their salad. Yeah. <laughs> it is it, that. And there, I like glad you brought that up, Nan, because even last week I was teaching a class and I was talking about nightshades and I said, now, I have to, everybody's different. There could be somebody who eats nightshade vegetables on a regular basis and they don't have any joint pains. And I, you know, I'm not a scientist. I can't explain it, but more power to you if it doesn't affect you. But I have a family history of it in my family and I was already starting to experience some joint pain in my early twenties. So I just avoid them. And again, I do not have any joint pains whatsoever. Of course, the vegan whole food lifestyle really helps with that too. But hey, I'm happy with you know what I do. And if I'm working with someone who has joint pains, that's one of the first things I do suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see that somebody mentions Christina Perello on the macrobiotic. It says, uh, okay. I started incorporating yep. macrobiotics principles of, it says local chef Christina Perello. So that's interesting that she lives now, Christina Perello is probably like a famous macro person because she had a TV show on PBS and I followed her for many, many years too. In fact, when I wrote an article back when Christina had a magazine, I wrote an article and it was published in Christina's magazine. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay. And that was from Kira as well. Can you, on my end, the bottom half of what she wrote is very gray. And do you see that on your end or is that... Yeah. No, I, I, I actually do. Yeah. It says, um, Christina, Pellett. her books describe how she used macrobiotics to overcome a terminal cancer diagnosis in her mid twenties. Yeah. Christina Perello overcame cancer and Christina, she's in Philadelphia. Yep. Mm -hmm. I hit it with my cursor and that's what happened. And remember I told you, I'm not, I'm not that savvy with Restream. So I think I did that to you all, but at least you can read what Kira has taken the time to Kira has taken the time to write. So go ahead. This is such an interesting story. Um, you know things that a lot of people have not had the opportunity to be exposed to because, again, you are working with foods and in a, a, a space that um, treats things differently. For example, you were talking with um, Margot this morning about pulstices and some people think oh come on you can't put onion on your feet and be okay so you're going to get to that i know it but is there anything else that you want to describe like maybe what's in your bundle and maybe why this is the second to the last day yeah. that we're going to be badgering you about the bundle but every one of us who are so adamant about it have a reason. So tell a little about the bundle. Tell what you are offering. Yeah. So the bundle's only for sale until tomorrow, Sunday, March 10th, over $8,000 worth of merchandise for only $49. What I have contributed in the bundle, I have a couple things. The first one is a cooking class and an e-cookbook, and it's called Scrumptious Plant-Based Burgers and More, because who doesn't love veggie burgers? Last year, I was inspired. Um, I wanted to teach a class with the beautiful, um, talented people that were in last year's bundle, which, by the way, last year's bundle was completely different. Uh, this year's is all new stuff. And so Vicki Brett-Gock and Sid Nodder stepped up to the plate, and we put together this class. And the burger that inspired me to want to do this was my pasty burger. Do you know what a pasty is, Nan? Yeah, I do. It's You're the first person I've talked to. Knows what a pasty well, I spent is. Time, I spent time in England. My oh, son yeah. had my second grandson in England. He was there three years, and so we dined out a lot when I went to visit. And We're yeah, in England. it's it's. I would call it a sandwich, but it's not sandwich. And of course, it's got that famous ingredient that the Brits 
expect to find in a pasty, and that is kohlrabi. So no, I don't put kohlrabi, kohlrabi in a rutabaga. rutabaga. Yeah, rutabaga. That's not kohlrabi. Okay. Yeah, my Go my ahead. my mom's side of the family is from England. And so um, a pasty, for those who don't know, it's a handheld food and the outside is a crust, but it's not a yeasted crust. It's more like a pie crust. And inside traditionally it was meat, but of course we don't want to do that. And so it's got to have rutabaga. Rutabaga is your root vegetable. It's in the cabbage family. It's very English and it's absolutely delicious. It has a distinct flavor. And also in a pasty is potatoes. Now, I put white sweet potatoes in my pasty. I think the white sweet potatoes have more of a flavor, too. And onions. And, oh, by the way, onions. Oh, and plus onions. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be lots and lots of onions in the pasty. So that was the flavor profile that inspired me making a pasty burger. And so the, 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 the pasty itself, the, the patty, beautiful rutabaga flavor. There's also millet in there. Mm. It has a white sauce, a white onion sauce on it because pasties don't have gravy in them. They have a, like a white sauce. And this is a gluten-free bun slash bread. And the base of that is quinoa. So that recipe is in the scrumptious plant-based burgers and more. And I just happened to make a bunch of patties up today that I'm going to be sticking mm -hmm. in the freezer because it's really good when you make veggie patties, you know, to put them in the freezer. You always have them on hand. So those patties are the rutabaga, onion, and um, did you, uh, millet? Yeah, the whole grain millet's in there too. Yep. In order to hold it together. And so it's a veggie burger that's unlike most that people would recognize because most people end up making their burgers with oats or bean or and beans and sometimes sweet potatoes but you're using sweet potatoes vegetable and instead of the pasty being a sealing packet you right. make, I don't mean uh well the the bread you're making the bread as as um flat little uh, discs that you then hold it with right yes absolutely that's your burger that's my burger and uh, delicious and a white sauce made with what onions and uh non-dairy beverage i like rice but you could use soy or almond or whatever your favorite non-dairy beverage is okay. yeah all right huh sounds delicious looks fantastic i want one uh, and then uh i wanted to mention also too is the collaborative cookbook that we all put a recipe in this is my brown rice aduki beans Mm. asparagus and sauerkraut dish tell them why aduki beans are so special because a lot of people aren't familiar with them well aduki beans are little red beans and they're smaller in size so when you eat them you have less gas <laughs> yeah. and they're smaller in size and they actually are the signature whole bean that feeds and nurtures like your kidneys and your adrenal glands so they're well known for that and um, they're kind of like more of an oriental bean, like over in um, Japan and everything. They probably know aduki beans more than we do here. But they're a very flavorful, delicious bean. And they're smaller than like, like a big bean. So they're really easy to digest. So what them. else do you put them in? So you buy dry aduki beans. Do they need um, soaking? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you get the dried ones, yes, you have to soak them overnight. Um, sometimes I get Eden organic canned beans because it's quicker. Uh -huh. Aduki beans and butternut squash, great flavor combination profile. The two of them together is awesome. Interesting. Okay. All right. And do you do or do you use an Instant Pot? No, I don't have an Instant Pot. Oh, okay. So when you put them on the stove, how long do you cook them once they've been soaked? I can use my pressure cooker. I use my pressure oh, cooker for beans. Same yeah. thing. So how long do you cook it on the pressure cooker? Aduki beans are small. It's not gonna, it's gonna take 10, 10 yeah. minutes. It's okay. not gonna take long because they're so small. Okay. If you want to just put it in a pot with water, it's gonna take an hour and 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but they'll be soft for you then too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, great. So you all have a new bean to try. And the fact that they're red adds to the phytonutrient and phytochemical profile because you get polyphenols there. So yeah, okay. So tell us more. 
Um, so then the second thing I have in the bundle, I'm really proud of, it's called Healing with Food, Compresses, Poultices, Teas, and More. And this is a class that I taught last year. It's three classes. And in the bundle, I also have all the information typed up in a little e-booklet. So you have the videos to watch, and then you have the booklet that you can read along. And the first week is onions and garlic. The second week is aloe and comfrey. And the third week is ginger and turmeric. I am a huge fan of fresh turmeric root. Yes. yes. Favorite. So do you want to tell them the story of Margot's cat's yellow butt? <laughs> well, it's a story I told Margot. Oh, it was, was, no, it, was, it wasn't it Margot's cat that ended up with the yellow butt, or was it your cat that ended up with the yellow butt? That's, that's my cat. Yeah, yeah. So then you tell that story, because I thought to myself, if I came to my cat, well, I can't say it, because then I'll take your, your, your fire away. But in other words, this cat got some interesting treatment, and he put up with it, and she took care of a cat problem. So, yeah. yeah. So in, in the cooking classes, I also tell personal stories because I've been using food for these medicinal purposes for years. And that's the whole purpose of me wanting to teach it. I want people, if they accidentally cut themselves or if they have swollen something, like if you're swollen, um, it's inflammation, right? And so there are so many different foods that you can use to treat inflammation. There are so many foods you can use to treat um, infections, instead of going for a pill, which is going to have all those side effects. So if you start using them once, then you're going to remember twice. You're going to remember three times. You're going to remember the more you use them, the more you're going to remember. So I had this beautiful white cat and his name was Angel and he lived for 23 years. He was so healthy for 23 years. It was just his last year of life. He had some health issues and he had swollen, infected anal glands. I didn't even know what that was until it happened to my cat, right? So I did a little bit of research and it's inflammation, it's swollen, and it's an infection, okay? So first thing I went for was um, steamed onion poultice because onion has anti-inflammatory properties. And so I actually showed how to do that onion poultice on the Chef AJ show a couple days ago. If anybody wants to pull that up and watch it. Um, but you, I would take it and it's easier to do a person because you can hold it on a person and you can tell a person, leave that on there with a cat. I had to hold the cat, you know, in my arm and I would put the, the steamed onion poultice on there and he would sit there for maybe two minutes and then he would squirm and, and he would get away. So I had to do that like three or four times a day. I had to put this on there because it ha you have the onion juices have to get on there, right? And besides that, I used my fresh turmeric root, which is my favorite. Because that, yeah. that's what gave me the visual where the, yes. the vet would have looked at this cat's bottom and said, what is she doing? <laughs> Go ahead. In case, yeah, in case people don't know, turmeric is bright yellow, orange. It's what makes yellow mustard yellow. That's turmeric. It will stain everything. When I work with turmeric in my kitchen, stains everything. It stains my fingers. And I did that on the Kathy Hester show, if you want to see my stained fingers. <laughs> and so I always have fresh turmeric root also on hand in the freezer and everything. And so turmeric is the strongest anti-inflammatory food on the planet. So I took the turmeric root and I put it on the infected area too, which turned my white cat in the area where I was putting it bright yellow. And yes, he had like a place that was bright yellow. Uh, but the thing is, is with a cat, you know, cats lick themselves. So all the stuff I was putting on him, completely harmless to a cat. So as opposed to if I had put some type of medicine or something, you don't know side effects, but it was all food. And so if he licked himself, nothing was going to happen. By the time I saw my vet, and I do have a holistic vet, so I do appreciate her very much, but I started treating it and then she saw it and she said, well, it's all healed now. What, what you did worked and it's not inflamed. It's not swollen. It's not infected. And so everything I did had worked to heal the cat. Yeah. So tell us what a poultice is because compresses, poultices, they sound like something from the 1800s, uh, 1500s, 1400s. In other words, these are, I'll call them ancient, even though ancient 
can be thousands of years. These are old um, folk art, folk art in terms of healing. Uh, and it's, it's interesting to me because a lot of people, and I'm going to say a lot of us, because I'm not familiar with poultices and compresses. I, I'm just not. So tell us about it, because I love that this is something that you hang your hat on to the degree that you even treat your animals this way and get great results. So the a poultice is when you take the actual food and you put it on the area. A compress is where you take the food and put it in boiling water and create a tea and then put a cloth in there and get the cloth wet. You wring it out, but then you use the cloth. Okay. So that's the difference. A poultice is the actual food. A compress is the liquid like a tea. And so it depends on how large an area on your body you need to cover and what you need to fix. So I'm going to demonstrate like a ginger poultice. Good. But if, if you had a backache, your back is very large. So it might be better to cover your whole back with the compress where you can, you know, make the ginger tea and then soak a towel in it and you can cover your whole back with the towel. So you have to take into consideration how much of the body area do I have to cover? If, if it's a smaller body area, then you would do the ginger poultice where you would use the actual ginger. Okay. And also too, ginger is very pungent and it's powerful. So also too, um, once you start working with it, always listen to your body. If you put the actual ginger poultice on there and your skin starts to get a little irritated because ginger is hot, right? It's, it, it's going to, it's going to start the, it's going to stop the inflammation, which is great, but um, you could use the compress, which is the tea might be a little, what's the word I'm looking for? A little less affected to the skin than the actual poultice, but the poultice is stronger. So, um, like the poultice is really good for joint inflammation and swelling and arthritis. So it also depends on if the condition is, I'm if this condition is chronic or acute. Acute means that it's happening right now. Boom, it hurts. Chronic needs, chronic means, oh, it's been hurting for a long time. So if it's acute and it's happening right now, say a toothache. Oh, all of a sudden I got a toothache. Then I would use the actual food. I would do a poultice because it's kind of stronger. Like I mentioned, the backache, that's chronic. It's been happening for a while. I would probably use the compress, the tea, okay? And you need to, but if you're going to use the compress, which is a tea to help your back, you want to do this on a regular basis, on a regular basis. This is not like a one-time thing, right? You want to do it on a regular basis. If you had a toothache and you were using the poultice, you would keep the poultice on there, changing it every few hours until the pain subsided. So acute pain would be like a toothache. Chronic pain would be like if you had a, a backache. So okay. there's different ways that you would treat it. But let's see here on the cutting board. So first of all, I have my beautiful ginger. Where's my ginger? Here's my ginger. Um, Can I say that Jill, is it copper tone? No, Copperton, Capperton, used to make mustard poultices to yes. break up a chest cold. Mm -hmm. Yes, mustard, ah. mustard's great that way, too. Here's my beautiful ginger. Oh, root. Nice. Did you know the best way to store gin fresh ginger root is in a paper bag, not plastic? Okay. So right. paper, the paper bag will absorb any moisture. If you put this in a plastic bag, the moisture will stay in there and then it'll start to mold. So the best way to store ginger root is in a paper bag. That's the first thing. Do you always, um, I may be ahead of myself or ahead of you, but do you always um, peel your ginger or are you one who scrapes it with a spoon or are you one who just says, what the heck, I'll, I'll grate it with the skin on, who cares? What's the story? Oh my, I'm having for the camera angle. Okay. The story is <laughs> depends on how you're going to use it. So if I'm going to eat the ginger root, if I'm going to grate it or cut it in matchsticks and add it to a stir fry or soup, I'm going to take the skin off because the texture is like paper and I don't want to eat paper. So if I'm going to actually eat it, I take the skin off. 
If I'm going to use it in a poultice, I'm not going to eat it. So I'm going to leave the skin on. Okay. If I'm going to juice the ginger, I can leave the skin on because I'm going to juice it. Okay. So yeah, if I'm going to eat it, I take the skin off. I don't use the back of a spoon. I know some people do. I use a peeler. I just use a regular old peeler, take the okay. peel off. Um, what about storing turmeric? Thanks on storing ginger tip. Awesome. Yeah, turmeric would do really good in a paper bag too before you start, you know, cutting it up and everything. And, and um, well, I described it all on Kathy Hester's show. I don't want to go into that too much on turmeric, but what I do. But um, yeah, I usually store grated turmeric in the freezer. I'm going to so. give you the full screen. Okay. Oh, I did that wrong. Hold on. Yay. Oh, that's awesome. You can do that. All right. So what I have here is this beautiful stainless steel grater. When I grate ginger, this is like my favorite stainless steel grater. And um, it's all the end is dried out. So I usually give it a, a fresh cut. So we have all the natural juices. Ginger is so full of juice. When you start grating it, you'll be surprised how much juice comes out. So I got a plate to catch all that beautiful juice that starts coming out. And you just grate it like so. And it's very strong anti-inflammatory properties, um, uh, antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal. Uh, you'll find all those things in ginger. And it depends on, you know, again, what you're going to treat, how much you want to grate the ginger. But there's a little bit of liquid on there anyway. So you're going to want to get some dressings. Like I usually have just these wound dressings or whatever. You know, most people have this in their cabinets or whatever. This is good to make poultices with. And it depends on the area that you want to cover. For instance... I've used the ginger poultice like this with my dad. My dad has arthritis in his knees. So I was having him take like a big cloth and putting the grated ginger in the cloth, you know, and then he would put it on his knees and then he would wrap like a bandage around it. And I told him to go to sleep with the ginger on his knees. I don't think he ever went to sleep, but he would sit there for a couple hours and the grated ginger will create heat also. And for people who have arthritis, knees and everything, the heat that the ginger produces actually feels good on the, the arthritic knees and everything. So that's, that's another thing. Depends on how big an area you want to cover as to how big a piece you want to use. I'm just going to do a small one. And if you don't have this, you could use cheesecloth. You could even use paper towel. If that's all you have, you know, you could use paper towel if that's all you have. And then you put it in the middle like so. And you, I can already feel the juices coming out of that ginger already with just that little bit. And then you just fold it over like so. And let's say you have a toothache. You're going to take that and you're going to put it right here like so. I, in the past, when I've had a toothache, I've done this. And then I take some of the, you know, the bathroom tape or I don't know what it is, medicine tape or whatever. And I just took a piece of tape and I just taped it on there. And then this thing just hung out on my cheek for a couple hours. <laughs> it doesn't look pretty, but it sure does work. It works really well to take away the inflammation and the swelling. It'll take away the swelling also. Huh. Um, and your book explains all of this. This is a must have. Yeah. I go through... Each class, like I, in the onion class, I teach you how to make an onion um, a poultice. I do both raw and cooked. And then I go through the comfrey, uh, the aloe, which I have my beautiful aloe plant right here. I actually teach you how to make aloe water from your aloe plant. And aloe is the best thing you can possibly use if you accidentally burn yourself. You, you want to have aloe for sure. Yeah. Um, tell us what comfrey is and where, well, first of all, I'll back up quite often when we find ginger in the market, we find the much, much, much smaller knobs of it. 
and it has all these protrusions. And so we don't have a nice big bulb like you do. Where do you find your big bulbs at the natural food stores or at bulk places or what? See how big that bulb is? That's nice. I got a really big one for the bundle week because so I could demo it and stuff. Okay. Normally, if I'm cooking, I would probably get a smaller piece, okay. you know, um, but then, you know, if uh, the, the here in Michigan, I'm in Michigan, we have a store called Kroger and Kroger has organic produce. I actually found and I was surprised it was this big, too, at Kroger's. Um, I found it there. It's organic. But of course, health food stores have the organic ginger also. Yeah. So buy the size that you think you're going to need. Like, let's say you have a chronic situation, whether it's arthritis in your knees or the back pain that I mentioned. And let's say you want to start doing the ginger tea in a compress, then you're going to need a, a huge piece, right? Mm -hmm. If you just want to um, make a ginger stir fry or a ginger soup, you can buy a, a smaller piece. So it depends. Okay. I hear a kitty talking. Oh, gosh, darn it. Sorry. I don't know if it's mine or yours, though, because my no, kids are out in the background, too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. She's outside the door saying, please let me in. And then she'll be all over me while I'm trying to talk to you. So I just don't dare do that right now. Um, and oh, I'm going to put you back. I'm going to put you back big again. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so glad it's another cat lover. I'm sorry, I, I love all animals. I'm sure you do too, but I'm not a, do I'm not a dog person. I have cats. In fact, I have five cats in my house right now. And last year, my male and female cat had kittens. In fact, they had four kittens. And I'm going to tell you, it was one of the most beautiful things. I stayed up all night long when my cat gave birth. I watched all four of the kittens come and it was so beautiful. And she knew I didn't, I didn't touch the kittens. I didn't touch the cat and do anything. Just her motherly instinct. She knew exactly what to do. I saw all of them being born and I watched them grow up. I did give one kitten away to a very loving household, which was great. But the longer the other ones stayed in my house, the more I fell in love with them. I ended up keeping three of them. So now I have five cats. Five cats. I have a, a um, stepdaughter. I'll call her my daughter. She's in New Mexico. And these cats are indoor cats. And she has five cats. Are yours indoor or indoor yes. or outdoor? Mine are indoor. Oh, yes. so you're doing the same thing. I have two and they, I've always had indoor outdoor cats, but I swore I would no longer allow my property to be a diner for my cats because they were killing well, way too many things. And I have a natural wildlife habitat certified garden. And so these two I brought home as sisters from a uh, honey, mine are tabby. I grabbed one of them. This is, this is, this is Jimmy, my boy, named after the greatest guitarist ever, Jimmy Page. Oh, I thought you were going to say Hendrix. Are you one of those? My Jimmy husband. Page, yeah. Okay. He's beautiful. Yeah. Well, these two sisters are now about a year and a half old and they're just, I don't know about you, but I can't keep them off counters. I can't keep them off of eating, away from eating everything they find on a counter, oatmeal, pasta. They just, they, they ate the top of my husband's uh, air fried potato because it had um, nutritional yeast on it. And I looked it up thinking, oh, they're going to die. And it said on, on AI chat GPT that if you want to get a cat to eat something that he otherwise doesn't otherwise eat, put nutritional yeast on it. So apparently that's a okay thing for a cat. But in any um, case, back to our animals. Yeah. Well, I was, I was raised with, two cats, two dogs, a horse and two ponies and chickens. I was raised on a farm, but in the house, the cats were house in the house and they were not allowed on the table. They're not allowed on the countertops. That's what I was raised as a kid. Yeah. So I've had cats my whole adult life since I moved out. And my cats are, especially because I cook for a living. No, absolutely not. They're not allowed on the table. They're not allowed on the countertops. And the best way to train them is I get a water bottle. So you do that then, right? Yes. And as soon as they get squirted a couple times, they I don't even need to squirt them. If they do anything bad, I pick up that water bottle and they look at me and they stop doing what they're supposed to because they get a, accustomed to it. They okay. really do. 
And so it does work and it doesn't really, it's water. It, it yeah. doesn't hurt them, but it's the best way to train them. Now, does that mean that they're not jumping up here when I'm not home? Yeah, they probably are, which would upset me. And my one cat, Rod, he's the dad and he's named after Rod Stewart and he's orange. He likes bread. And so sometimes I've made homemade sourdough bread and I forget and I leave it on the counter because it has to cool. And he has gotten up there and started, he wants to start gnawing on it. So yeah, yeah even though I he's not supposed yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. My indoor outdoor cats were never like that. They would just go kill something. But these, they roam for things to eat. But we better get back on track. So you are <laughs> talking about comfrey. Tell us what comfrey is. I I don't know. I thought I knew things because I've spent my life loving food, loving to cook and in a kitchen, but I don't know comfrey. So tell us about it. Comfrey is one of my all time favorites. I have comfrey in my house all the time and um, it's a plant and you get the leaves, um, although they use the root also, but I get loose comfrey leaf tea and I always look for the organic and they have been using comfrey since before recorded history. And in the, the classes that I teach, I go into the history of the food also. And they use comfrey for things like on the battlefield. If, you know, you've got your hand sliced off or something, they put the comfrey on there. Comfrey is for bones, skin, and tissue. Okay. It will heal cuts like magic. I... This is about 10 years ago. I tripped and fell and I busted open my chin and everybody's like, oh, you got to go to the hospital. And I'm like one of those. I'm not going to the hospital. I'm not going to the hospital. So it was I knew the cut was cleaned very, very well. And I started to use comfrey on it and it took a while. I had to have this bandage and the comfrey on there and everything. But the comfrey will take your skin and I'll go like this and I'll put it back together very quickly. Can you spell it? Is it C-O-M-P-H-R-E-Y? Is it one of those or is it an F? C -O -M -F. It's an F. Yeah. Oh, it's an F. Spell yep. it. C-O-M-F-R-E-Y. Comfrey. Okay. Yeah. And so I have no scar on my chin whatsoever. Okay. Had I gone to the hospital and they would have put stitches in it, I would have had a scar. Yeah. I yeah. used comfrey. No scar whatsoever. Comfrey has been used for a long time for... Um, scar old scars that you think would never heal also like if you have you know an old scar from where you got cut and you don't like it because it's ugly you could try putting the comfrey on there and eventually it, it will make the scar look less noticeable some people have used it for acne scars to get rid of that i mean it's for, it's for broken bones um and the you know i in, in the in the class i actually read something out of a book and this is how I first discovered comfrey. This woman wrote a book about how she had this terrible accident and she just broke her leg in multiple places. And the doctors were like, you're never going to heal and everything. And she used comfrey. She drank the tea. She put it on there and everything. And her leg healed. And the doctors were just blown away by what happened. Where do you get comfrey? Okay, so I order it on the Internet now because I get big bags of it because um, I make poultices. It's also good for black and blue marks. So anything that's skin or tissue. Um, but I must tell you that, and I go into great detail in the class about this. Okay. There is a controversy about comfrey. Many years back, they did a lot of studying about comfrey. And you know how scientists don't study the whole plant? They take it apart and they go this component, this component, this component, because they don't realize the, sin the energy of how everything works together and they pull everything apart. So they studied one component of comfrey and they said, this is really bad. You shouldn't be having it. So there was that controversy that came out, although that was proven wrong, completely proven wrong. But then somebody overdid comfrey. They were taking comfrey pills. They were drinking comfrey drink and they were doing all, they were overeating the comfrey and they had liver issues. So there was a time in the 80s, this was before I was into health. I've heard about it years later, so I don't have personal experience from it. These are, but I have been told there was a time in the 80s where you couldn't get comfrey because they took it off the market saying it causes liver damage. 
Really? A plant that's been used since before recorded history that the ancient Egyptians and Romans used to heal wounds on the battlefield. But we're going to take it off the market because somebody overused it and it caused liver problems. Okay. I, I have drank comfrey tea multiple times. For I'm trying to remember. Again, I hate to keep using the same example, but your tooth is bone. So if you have tooth issues, you drink the comfrey tea. Um, when I busted open my chin, I was drinking the comfrey tea and I was also using the comfrey um, poultice on there. Um, and so no problem whatsoever, you know, with anything, if you overeat it or overconsume it, you're going to have a problem. So when you buy the package of comfrey tea, it will say for external use only. Okay. And they make them put that on there. They have to put it on there. But I'm telling you, it's completely fine to drink comfrey tea. However, I will say, and I say this in the classes, I am a do not a doctor. This information is from my personal experience and my personal education. I can't even tell you how many books I've read and how many videos I've watched. And so you need to be the judge. You need to decide whether or not you are going to do this. And God forbid, if anything major happens to you, you need to go to a hospital. And I just need to say that. Okay. And have you ever tried growing it? Yeah, I had a comfrey plant in my backyard in a pot. And it's it's no longer lives. It's dead now because comfrey will take over and grow like gangbusters, which is why I never took it out of the pot and I planted it in my backyard because my whole backyard would just be comfrey. Okay. And so I did, but um, I don't have the plant. Any I wish I did have another plant. I'll have to get another one somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, how are we doing with time? What else? Oh, we're coming, to kind of coming up to uh, an hour, but what else do you want to talk about? Have, um, you, have, you, have you given them enough information about the healing with foods class and about your other um the the best burgers um to allow you not to think oh shoot i wish i had said this that or the other yeah so let's see um other things in the bundle that i absolutely love because you know we talked about my stuff but there's so much great stuff so laura landry has a book in there called plants pills and punchlines where she tells her incredible story of all the health issues she had and all the prescription drugs that she was taking. And when she changed to the whole food vegan lifestyle, she got off all of those prescription drugs and she let her body heal itself because the body has the ability to heal itself, but you've got to give it the right stuff. There's a few yoga courses in there. I love yoga. I do yoga. And so that's awesome. And um, let's see, um, Margaret, we mentioned, or Margot. I have to say her name right. Picky Kids. She's got this course in there. If your kids are picky eaters, it's a really nice course. Um, there's actually four things in the bundle for kids. I'm so excited about that because uh, I taught kids at an after school program in 2017. And I wrote a book. I'm the author of six cookbooks, but this is the one I did in 2017 with all the recipes I taught for the kids. So I was really excited to see in the bundle four different, you know, cookbooks and videos that, you know, you can get your kids into the healthy food, which I think is so important because they're our future. We got to do that. And Chef Julie Dunaway's Japanese Two cookbook. I think I made four recipes out of there. Um, these are all my recipes. That's all I have to show. But uh, it's a great deal. And we only have till tomorrow. Tomorrow, March 10th is the last day. It's only $49. $8,000 worth of merchandise. And uh, Nan has posted in the description of the video links to buy the video, right? I'm, I'm sorry, the bundle. I said video, yep. bundle. Yeah, and that's how you get it. And for some people who don't know, it's digital. The whole thing is digital. You got all these books and video courses and anything that you like, you can download and keep forever. It's yours forever. And I liken it. Let me make this a little larger. I, I, to help rationalize an expense, I usually compare it to something else of value. And I think an easy thing to compare it to is a lunch out or a meal out with a friend or 
treating a family member, most lunches, if not all dinners out, unless you're eating fast food, is going to be $50. That's a one and done. It's food that we probably would have been better off not having. And it's a done deal. You walk away, you forget it. $49 for this is something that we can download or put on a flash drive and use that to every time you want to explore, go into this plethora of information, 151 contributors. It's way too much to do much with in a day or two, but yeah. you just go in there and you're like, I'll call it shopping. It's like going into a mall. You're gonna be able to shop through all of these things and months from now say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I had a da 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 da, or try a recipe and think, oh my gosh, this person's brilliant because these are some of the best in the business who have contributed. So I'll say it that way and then I'll stop on that subject. But anything else? Is there um, anything else, Val? Uh, no, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And I've, um, I've really enjoyed meeting all the people in the bundle. There's such a great, wonderful group of very nice people, all educated and they all have something to share and you know, you really want to get the bundle, get the bundle, get the bundle. But if you're hesitant, watch some of these interviews on Nan's Facebook page or my Facebook page. Mine's macro. Well, you have to go to my personal page. So it's Valerie Wilson, macro Val. But I have interviews like this, too. And I think if you watch the interviews and you see these wonderful people and you hear this information, you're really going to want to get the bundle. Yeah. Okay. That's funny because somebody wrote, is that your cat or mine? <laughs> it's like, I maybe cats are howling through doors all over the place. Um, we've had some very nice comments on the chat. Thank you all for being here today with us. It's been such a treat to get to know Val. And it's, it reminds me all the time of why I've decided that I'm going to age powerfully because if i indeed have decades to go can you imagine every one of us who adds any number of years to our life because of our good choices and we're making those right now have so much to gain there are so many things to learn and so many interesting subjects what val is talking about pulses compresses um uh pasties. I knew what they were, but I never thought of making them. Um, I'm going to dive into that's part of the bundle, but that's part of what we're doing right now with all of these lives that we've been doing on, um, on, well, in each of our platforms or on each of our platforms, we found our people. That's what we've done. We found our people. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Keep coming. I have a couple more today and Val, is this it for the bundle or do you have more today and tomorrow? Well, actually, in about 15 minutes, Nan and I are going to be on my Facebook page. If anybody wants to go to, yeah, go to Valerie Wilson, Macro Val on Facebook or Chef Valerie Wilson on YouTube. You can watch us continue this conversation because now we're going to turn the tables and I'm going to ask Nan some questions and she's going to talk to us about what she has in the bundle. So this is going to be fun. And then tomorrow, I think I have three of them lined up. So, yep. And then that's it. Okay. All right, everyone. Have a great day because I know I'm going to Val. Thank you for being with us. And I'll be right back to you, Valley. Valley. Val. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.